Great to see you, Coach Morris. Always, George. Good to see you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Coach Morris, when he came here, I, we had one of the best interviews we've had in a long time. San Sean. San Sean, because I know Sean gets jealous if we say someone was Don't better than let him get sensitive. <laughs> right. But, but you revealed to us about what we then call what we then then decided to call him S Boogie because you told us about his dancing and since then he has never lived that up or down in that scenario. You know, he's he's he's, he's not a dancing move right now. No, I bet not. We're about to be locked in and loaded in yeah, practice, yeah. but um you know, he will be. In the in the off season though, he said, he did he did admit, he said He's like, maybe I can dance. He's like, after a vodka soda or two, <laughs> I can get, I can get S Boogie back out of him in the off season. There you good. go. It's now, easy. what it, what's the energy been like here? A lot of young guys out here. Obviously, change over over the last couple of years, but particularly from last year to this year, what is the energy like here right now, Coach? You know, it's just been enthusiastic. You just mentioned it with the youth, the uh, the different people, the different roles being formed, guys having the ability to get out there and prove themselves. I think. It brings sort of a, a nice energy for not only the players but the coaches. It's a challenge for us all. It's a challenge for you guys to find these new faces, these new homes. Everybody knows Aaron Donald on defense. And then after that, who is it, right? And then you give a little challenge for a guy like Ernest to step into these roles and to fill these roles of leadership that we've had such a good time and a good run here at the Rams with. And now these guys are going to go out there and prove some people wrong, I think. I, I think so, too. Now, listen, a couple of things. We had Ernest on the other day. You know, I also work on, on NBA broadcast. So I told Ernest, I saw your comment about Steph in the golf. Yeah. I said, when I see Steph in a couple months, I'm going to let him know. <laughs> so you better be ready because he takes that stuff very seriously, the golf stuff. Ernest might have made a serious error right there. <laughs> Challenging Steph and anything having to do with accuracy. <laughs> If we have a toughness battle between Ernest and Steph, I'm taking Ernest when it comes to something on the football field. But right. if you're talking about golf or shooting a basketball, yeah. I'm out. I'm yeah. taking And then Steph. he's like, oh, I just started playing. Like, yeah. like, 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 oh, is oh, that man. easy? This man oh. just won the American Century Classic. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing, we, Ernest? I started a year ago. I'm ready to go. Like, <laughs> it's clearly a man with way too much confidence and ability <laughs> when you're talking about one of the greatest shooters of all time. But, you know, you being a defensive guy, the defensive guys has got a little screw loose here and there, and that's part of what makes them great on defense. That is it. You know, part of it is confidence, so let's keep that confidence is going let's not show him this uh let's not let's not let him hear this tape this recording and nothing about it but <laughs> let him keep his confidence but let's keep him far away from Steph as we can coach when you're coordinating for your squad right you're looking at the guys for you as a coach the first week how many of these names do you actually know you know Beto has been a it's been a great off season and a chance to get a chance to meet these young guys these Tanners these Rashads the people that you guys have no idea who I'm talking yeah. about has been fun in the meeting room Right, the bond is you get a chance to get with these guys in the meeting room, see if they can take it to the classroom. Then having a chance to go out into the grass next year, execute some stuff in the off season, having an off season this year, which was different than last year from the Super Bowl run. Yeah, and now having a chance to get to training camp, these guys are ahead of the curve or, or a little bit further than you thought they would be, just based on the genuine knowledge of. You got to give the coaches credit. You know, some of the new faces in the coaches that we born in here, the Aubrey Pleasants of the world, the Joes of the world, and all those kind of guys that are coming affecting these new guys along with Beak, along with some of the people that's been here, like Shula. I mean, I, you got to be fired up, Mike, and all the guys that we have, you know. And then obviously over in the dog pound with Henny and AC, yeah. their coaches have formed a great bond with their players to get these guys to come out here and practice and play hard and fast. And, of course, you know, you look at the other side when they're going up against the Cooper Cups of the world. I know he's a little dinged up with the hamstring, but, you know, when you got someone like that on the other side, guys like Tyler Higby, right, all those guys who have been there, played in a Super Bowl, won a Super Bowl, and for your young guys to compete against those type of guys, and Avila, right, on the offensive line, going up against Aaron Donald, that is invaluable stuff, isn't it? You know, to me, it all starts with number nine. You know, if number nine comes out ready to play, and Coop's going, and some of those guys that he can get involved with the football and be able to spread it around and throw it as much accuracy as he's able to, it, it, it only makes our practice go. And when that's going the right way and things are clicking the right way, it gets Sean going. It gets his juice and his energy going. It gets the, the script thrown out of the window and the competitive edge comes out from both of us and have his ability to compete. Having Mike LaFleur here has been awesome. Yeah, It's been, it's been a, such a sounding board for Sean and such a something else for me to compete with. And getting all these guys involved has just been something great, man. And watching these guys go out there and compete, which you're going to see today, which I think we're going to have a high-level competition uh, when it, once it gets going, especially when the scripts go away. You've talked about it with us before, and he's obviously talked about it. You guys are like brothers. You guys go way back. But you mentioned that competition. When he gets his juices flowing, I would imagine you get your juices flowing on the other side too, right? It fires us up. You yeah. know? When he says we're going off script and it's time to go and he's calling out situations, he has an amazing ability to be the head coach at the same time. Uh, be a part of the offensive staff at the same time, know exactly what's going on on defense, 
um, to be able to correct those things. So it's either going to be a great day when we walk up the field or it's going to be a real fast walk shown to the podium <laughs> to get some things done and corrected as quickly and as fast and as efficiently as he can because it's just how he works. You know, he's wired that way. He's wired with such a, um, a magnetic personality that can be blatantly honest with you and give you absolute truth mm-hmm. and be able to get that stuff done on the grass immediately and immediate feedback. So you're an East Coast guy. You coached all over the place. but when you I come don't to- know anymore. Well, okay, you, I'm loving you the West Coast life. It's nice you were born, here, right? right? <laughs> I was born over there, but yeah. you know. I'm but not. you've coached in the East. And when you look around this Rams camp, and we were talking about just how hard it was to get in here with the traffic at the parking, the Rams fans, their faithful come out strong, right? So when you first came out here, what'd you think? You know, um, this Rams fan base has been great to us. You know, I got out here in just such a wonderful year to go out there and compete and win a Super Bowl and to have the ability to do that with the people behind us and then able to go be a part of a parade and then to be able to have that celebration. Then last year, have a couple downs, but people still support you. You know, like that stuff's important. You know, we try to play bigger than it is, and we try to act like we don't play it down, and we don't need anybody else. It's all about the people in our walls, but it's all of us together. And I think that's a part of us, right? It's people first. And we tend to let our, know, let our people know that we're people first. We're people first organization. We will always be that way, and I love this L.A. Central. I'm, I, you know, I probably listen to a little bit more Snoop Dogg right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It right. is what it is. Right. Raheem Morris, defensive coordinator for your Los Angeles Rams with us here on 710 ESPN, your home for the Rams. Uh, so – Last year was obviously an incredible challenge in a lot of ways, right? You're coming off the highs of the Super Bowl. Everything that could go wrong goes wrong. Sure. The offensive line has 12 different lineups during the season. Like, it had to be just really challenging to deal with. How do you – do you flush that away? Do you take anything from that? Like, what do you draw from that experience? Everything in football, and I don't even want to tell you how long it's been, but you can figure it out with Google, but – these 20 some odd years of being through football, you go through ups and downs and you learn from every single moment. And when you get a chance to go through a season as hard as it was, as really refreshing as it was, as the ability to get these young guys going and now to see these guys come back, I think you got to take, you got to draw on all those experiences. You're going to learn from those things, either good or bad, um, no matter what it is, especially when you're talking about football. And that's what the code is with all our guys and with all the coaches that are on, on deck. Sean came back for a reason and he didn't come back uh, to disappoint. He came back here. Um, for us to compete, for us to be, go to as highest level and give you everything that we have. And we are absolutely willing and able to do that. As I watch Matthew throw a no-look pass in the, yeah. the end zone. <laughs> he loves doing that stuff. Yeah. That's drive I, you crazy when you're defending him on that side. That I can't throw standing still. But, <laughs> uh, it's it's going to be so much fun. We're starting our special teams right now. and yeah. um, This is fun. You know, yeah. having a new coordinator there yeah. and Chase and having the ability and the juice and the energy and yeah. just having the authentic stuff that you have. It's what we love. Ra- come from. Raheem, thank you so much. I know you got to get out there. Thank you for stopping by for a few minutes. We appreciate you it as always. Me. Anytime, man. And, uh, great Good. to have you on. Yeah, we'll get that Snoop. Great to have you guys on my show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. We, listen, you read. You can come on whenever you want. Like, you tell artists. You we'll give you a microphone whenever you want. Hey, we can take this thing to practice. You get some real entertainment. Okay, hey, I won't, be, get I won't that be challenged. Get that man a wireless get, mic. Get the wireless mic. I won't be challenging Steph to anything. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, we can take it there. Yeah, Hostra's finest right there. There he is, Raheem Morris. Thank you so much, the defensive coordinator for your LA Rams. 